Do I look nice? Yes, you do. Two women in their 20s discussing something standing in an office cabin which has a nameplate of the CEO's personal secretary written on it. Do I look presentable? Yes, you do. Do I look? Before you can complete your sentence, you are cut off by your one and only bestie Zoro, whom you called in your office just to see how you look. Yeah, that's it. Now don't ask me if I look like a woman or not because for that, I will recommend you to do a DNA test and as a result they will discover another species because you don't act like humans. You zipped your mouth in a thin lip knowing you just tucked up. Zoro, he, you look so beautiful just like you looked here and there. That's lover pot. He gasped standing up. That's, that's why you are still single. A flower pot? When you should have said flower not flower pot. Seriously? She rolled her eyes at your silly behavior, you pouted showing your big shiny eyes to her, making her sigh. Don't show me those eyes, you have dark circles under them. And you ended up hearing her say that, but then you made her flinch by fisting your hand and punching at your palm. This is because of that rabbit chili, you made me work our time. Zoro sighed, hugging you because she know, no one could talk in front of that rabbit, I mean the big boss John Junko. You look good in this pencil skirt and white shirt with the first button open. She winked at you opening your second button too. Perfect. Now I'll go. Bye bye. She gestured to you and giving you a blank kiss, leaving you there staring at your button. What is that supposed to mean? Just then, you got a call from the main office, or you can say from Big Boss. You quickly picked it up. Yes, Mrs. John. And then you heard that deep chilly voice of him for the first time this morning. Bring Han's project file and my schedule. Yes, I understand. Before you complete your sentence, the call was already dropped. You poked your tongue inside your cheek, calming yourself. Maybe he didn't have his tough life yet, well, I mean his morning green tea yet. Yeah, tea, not coffee. Yeah, it's coffee. You quickly picked the tab and file in your hand, running to his office with your heels that were making a perfect rhythm full night. Knocking at his office door, you already entered because he once scolded you to not stay out for a long time and just enter. Don't know why. As you entered, you saw he had his green tea placed in front of him. You sighed in relief because it was like a calming pill. Your eyes met when he looked up, pushing his glasses up with his middle finger and a pen on the other hand. Good morning, Mr. Jones. He respectfully bowed as he nodded in response. He huffed and pouted as he didn't answer your greeting. And that didn't go unnoticed by him. Good morning. You smiled when he greeted you back and placed the file in front of him. You leaned back on his chair, which has his coat hanging on it, while you opened the tab, started to speak up the schedule. Soon you have a meeting with Han's son in an hour, and after that you have a lunch meeting with Miss Lila. You had a break after pronouncing her name because this woman is so weird. And then you have to sign some files of upcoming project and shareholders in it. Last in the evening, you have scheduled a meeting with her company employees before they leave about Han's project. You sighed after completing the schedule, looking at him. He was staring at the file in his hands, or what you thought. Would say you know because you need to have a plastic surgery to make it up to that level, Mr. Jones. He hummed flipping the pages of file and he walked, he placed the file at the table with a thumb and looked at you, then he picked up a bunch of files. These are our past shareholders file, I want you to go through it and compile a list of those who had been in partnership with Hans. You made an office, no doubt why he became a CEO at such a young age. Hard work and intelligence is a key he has. Okay, I understood. He nodded and picked his teacup out. Take this and come back with a filled one. You chuckled, nervously getting the cup from him. Then you went out handling all the bundles of file with the tab and his teacup alone. A poor woman. As he left his office, he quickly moved the keyboard to his direction and opened a CCTV footage light. The bath was where he just sent you to make his tea. Its thin lips curved up, which he always shot in a cold line. He felt like it was spring, an autumn for him when he stared. As your clumsy pouty figure, you must be internally making some cute nicknames about him, like that rabbit chili, he knew about it too. 
and he loved it. But he also knew you will never bad mouth about him because how respectable you were to him and everyone else in the office. You are standing in a little kitchen of the office to make your boss tea. While you are working, two new intern employees enter the kitchen for their own business as their eyes fall on your figure. You are looking too innocent and also hot in that dress. And the young blood shoot watching you. Suddenly the tea packet fell from your hand and you bent down to pick it up. Accidentally saw a little bit of your which made back draw more. You felt some presence and looked up. Mm, hey. You nervously spoke at first both guys looked at each other and then at you with their blushing cheeks. They gave you a light smile and left the kitchen while you stood there dumbfounded. Who are those fair do boys? He chuckled and started to make the tea. They didn't know. Your boss was watching all this from his office as his eyes went red by the behavior of those boys and your open button. Which he also knew you have an open on some dirty purpose but it became a main issue now because he will not let other people look at you with perverted gaze. After a few hours it was lunch time and for Chunk's meeting with Miss Lila he had a meeting with Mr. Hang's son a while ago who was the same age as yours and his attitudes were too friendly and comfortable for you but Mr. John seems to be not liking his behavior. He thought, because while Mr. Han was talking to you, Chung was glaring at him. Chung also told you to button up that second button with your open in the morning. He said, I will catch a cold. So thoughtful of him for me. And now you are ready to head to a nearby cafe to have lunch with Miss Lila. Have you taken the file? He asked while wearing his coat. He patted the file, which you were holding, over your chest to reassure him. He nodded and walked ahead while you walked behind him being professional secretary of your CEO. Reaching the cafe, you settled down at a table which was booked by the company. You placed the file with the laptop and your tab on the table. While Chung sat on the chair beside you, Miss Lila was still not here. Hello sir, may I know what you and your girlfriend want to order? He respectfully placed the menu in front of you and Chung you chalked on air. Putting your hair behind your ear, you saw Chung didn't give a damn reaction to it, so you were about to deny the relationship he just spoke, but we will like to order in a few minutes. The waiter bought and laughed, but your little mouth was never going to be close. Mr. John, why didn't you tell him? We are not girlfriend and boyfriend. You met that hand sign with your fingers in front of each other. He wanted to chuckle at your behavior, but controlled himself. This isn't his business to know about our relationship. You were about to speak more, but Jungkook, her high-pitched, curly voice took your attention. You blinked as it was a thousand times today. You were cut off by many people while talking. Well, I walked towards both of you while spreading her thousand-dollar perfume scent in the cafe, gaining attraction from mostly males, while Jungkook was busy on his phone. Mr. Chun, Miss Lala is here. He looked up to see her tall figure, which was shorter than... His obviously stood up to greet her with a handshake, but instead of it, she hugged him. Chung backed off looking at you, who was only staring at both of them. He rolled his eyes secretly, as he didn't show the reaction he wanted to see. They both sat down as Chung started to discuss the work, and you were typing and showing some pages to them on the laptop. You noticed how Leila was more focusing on Chung than his words and that somehow gave you a sting feeling you didn't know what it was, but you felt irritated that she could just focus on work so a few times he showed tap screen just in front of her eyes, making her back off while Chung was controlling his laugh. That's perfect. Now what about tomorrow's meeting again at dinner and only with Chung? She eyed at you and making that alone obvious. Before Chung could say something, you spoke out. I'm sorry to say this, Miss Lila, but Mr. John has already packed schedule tomorrow at dinner. It's too packed just like a triangle came up. Chung wasn't able to control his laugh, so he pretended to choke on food and laughed at your perfect example of kimp up. While Lila glared at Wyan, that that's right, he said, trying to close his mouth. In a few minutes, Lila left and you with Chung also went back to the office. Why you lied to her about my schedule tomorrow? I don't think so. I have some dinner schedule. He raised his eyebrows with you go as you can't lie to him. Miss June because Miss Lala's behavior. I know I don't have any right to speak out but I don't like her behavior towards you. And I also know that it irritates you too. So I lied. I'm sorry. 
He bought as an apology. He found your word calming him and making him satisfied about your thoughts that were going inside his mind. It's okay, I understand. He smiled at his response. His eyes fall on your pink lips, which were looking dry. Your lips looked dry, suddenly he blurted out, making you confused, and he mentally face palmed. I mean, I... You look dehydrated. He made an old face and nodded. He was right. You didn't drink this much water. That must have made you look pale. Is John, is work finished? You asked as most of the employees left the office because it's already 7 p.m. No. He placed some files in front of you, making you huff. Complete them in an hour and go home. You nodded, not speaking more. Picking up files, you walked to your cabin, thinking again today you are going to work more. Chang switched on his computer screen to look at you and also did his own work. You are doing your work until you receive a message from Zoro, who had already left the office. She was asking for a girl's night stay, but guess what? She denied because of all work. She got angry at the messages and told you to just ask the boss why he always made you stay back, not others. You also got curious and thought, what's wrong if I ask that, right? But somehow you were feeling hot and saw the aircon wasn't working to open the window of the office, which didn't help much. So you opened your shared top three button. The top one was already open and you did open two more and sat on your chair working. After an hour, you finished reviewing the files and mistakes, and finally closing them, you got up. You remembered what Zoro told you to ask from Mr. John. Should I ask Mr. John, what if I'm taking too much? You shook your head and opened the office door, but as you opened it, you saw Chung standing just in front of your office. You flinched at his sudden presence, but were relaxed, Mr. John. He was looking at you already, his eyes caught your collarbone, which was fully visible, and a bit of your because three buttons were open, he thought you maybe forgot to close them back. Caressing back of his neck, he looked away gulping a lump. Your shirt buttons, he spoke making you guess, and close those buttons back. Um, I was going back so thought of robbing you too, he spoke not looking at you, you tried to deny. It's okay Mr. Chen, I can book a cab. No, no, it's already late. It's not safe at this time. You knew his stubborn behavior, so he just agreed. I'll wait for you in the car. He went back, making you leave a heavy sigh. How can I forget about Bert and Stump Wyan? In a while, you came down and sat in his car. He started to drive it until he stopped in front of your house. The whole drive was silent and peaceful, but you didn't forget about the question. Here we are, your home. He spoke looking outside the window in the surroundings, but you took his attention with your words. Mr. John, why do you always make me stay late at the office? His head turned to face you quickly because of work. Obviously, he spoke with confidence, but I don't think so. He chuckled openly now. Then what do you think of Miss Ian? He asked with a grin on his face. He played with your fingers as your confidence was getting decreased in front of his confidence. I think there is something else because the work you give me can be done the other day per schedule, but you gave me that a day before. Now he was trying to find an excuse. He didn't think you would say this much. That's because I, you. His grip on the steering wheel tightens. But Mr. Jones, Jung bite his lower lip. Suddenly he faced you, making you a little back off. It's more like what you think. You'll tilt your head because you weren't thinking anything, you just wanted his answer. I'm not thinking anything. He said with those innocent eyes and cute face. Now he giggled at you. You were confused because the John Jungkook, also known as Chili Rabbit, is giggling. Is he taking? You are too innocent to see it with your eyes. You blinked your eyes. Then, do I need a microscope? He laughed, shaking his head. Okay, answer my question. What if I have a crush on someone and the person is also single? Then what should I do? Chung spoke, making you go up. You didn't show any nervousness on his question, but you did feel something weird in you. But still, you answered honestly. Then you should confess as soon as possible. Because I'm sure the person you like will be perfect, and perfect people doesn't stay single so long, so be fast. You finished your words and looked away from him. That's so right. I'm in love with the perfect person whom I'm always afraid to lose, that I want to engulf her in my arms so tightly and protectively from every other person who has bad eyes on her. His words made you feel good somehow. 
Thinking of a person who will love you like this for eternity, protecting you like a special gem. How lucky to be that person. You envy that person. I really respect your love for that person. Your words made him wish to just confess right here. What if I confess now and here? Her eyebrows frown. Mrs. Joan, will you call her here right now? He asked, being all confused. He shook his head as his hand came forward to your hair, placing your hair strand behind your ear. It gave you tingle feelings. No, silly girl, I'm talking about the person sitting here in front of me right now. You heard skip a beat as you felt some current passing through your nerves. You were freezed on your spot until you felt him rubbing your cheek. Your eyes blinked, realizing it's not a dream but reality. But what? You are still not sure of what he said. Kim Wayan, mark my words in your heart and mind. The person I love is you. I don't know how because as time went by, I realized I'm so in love with you that even the smallest thing you do that mattered to me so much. I didn't want to admit it so soon but your presence always made me go this crazy that I lost control or my emotions. There's no lust, desire nor love at first sight. It was a progressing love. I just want you to trust me and give me a chance to prove it. Chance? He nodded his head with his glittery eyes. He felt sincerity in his words. You didn't thought about something like this, you and your boss together, but you always had that tiny crush on him, you will not deny, but being in a relationship is different, that requires responsibilities and trust. But that's I, Mrs. John. You were not looking at him, he cupped your face looking in your almost tearing eyes. Hey, don't. I'm not forcing you into anything. It's okay if you're not ready. Um, before he completed his sentence, he felt your lips or his cheek, not lips, lol. You quickly faced the window. I truly trust you and I'm ready to give you a chance. You said because you also like this personality somewhere and you can't just live alone whole life, right? Somewhere you also need other half. So why not a person whom you know very well and who can love you so deeply? Hey, face me. He grabbed your shoulder and leaned into you to look at you. Are those really your words? He was trying not to smile too widely, but as you noticed, his funny smile broke out making you smile too. Well done. You were right about my schedule to Miss Tara. I'm busy tomorrow at dinner time too. No, he asked because I'm going on first day with my girlfriend. He got shy and again tried to look away but he was fast to capture those thin lips in his. In that deep breathless kiss, he whispered those sweet words to you. That was the start of your beautiful love life. You can always feel safe in my arms. I will never let you go.